The hardest choice I have ever known was to walk away, but not alone. When I stepped into IIT Madras as a PhD scholar, my heart was full of dreams. But sometimes, reality does not match the dreams. Job uncertainties loomed over me. Without 60% in my MSc, many job opportunities was closed for me. Marriage and financial responsibilities has pressed down like a constant weight. My parent health was falling and I was far away from my home. Night after night, I had sleepless nights and panic attacks have my uninvited constant companions. One day, sitting in my lab, I asked once myself that what's the point of having a PhD degree if you are really losing your peace of mind. So three reasons I can give you besides why I left my PhD program at IIT Madras. First of all, I uh, I do not have 60% in my master's. That was my biggest fear throughout my PhD tenure. Secondly, I have uh, financial and job insecurities and third my parents health was not well during my PhD tenure. So all the all of those things was the main uh, reason or main culprits uh, behind my decision to uh, quit the PhD program. So let's start from the beginning. It was 2019, 22nd of July. We all got into the campus and I was very happy. Me along of my I think 15 or 16 friends, most of them were Bengali. So we joined the course together. And I was uh, very much motivated. I mean, at, at that same, same time, I was serious that though I don't have uh, good marks in my master's, but I have to do well in the PhD coursework. So I studied hard. I got 9.1 in CGPA in the PhD coursework, and I was very happy. Then what have happened is, uh, in between, after I think 11 months of your PhD tenure, we all sent back to home because of the COVID, the lockdown one, and we spent almost 10 to 11 months at our home. We never thought that uh, it was it, it will be the biggest long time or the biggest gap in our PhD tenure. Then the lockdown was over and we uh, came back into campus. So my uh, wa work was on diamond decoration. So for a diamond thin film to go, I used to work 7 to 8 hours on sometimes 10 to 11 hours as well to grow one sample. And sometimes you work hard for 5 hours and you realize that your experiment didn't go well, then you have to throw out the sample. Then again, you have to start from the scratch. But all this was was a, was a part of a learning, and this was a part of research. And day by day, I was improving. I was getting some results. Still, I remember at the end of two and a half year, I got to get some important results, and I thought maybe it could be published as well. So uh, this was a part of where I was getting motivation. And we used to have a regular uh, 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 lab interaction. We used to have regular seminars, and uh, those were really golden days uh, from where we used to learn things. I still remember my first presentation that I cite uh, as reference wikipedia.org during a talk and everybody laughed about that. But slowly I can say that I have improved a lot at the end of four years. So I belong to a lab where most of the instrumental facility was available. Whether it is a scanning electron microscope, whether it is a XRD thin things or powder, whether it is X-ray photoluminescence spectroscopy, or it is Raman spectrum, or uh, parametric analyzer and so on. So over the tenure, we have learned so many things. We have started from scratch and have gone to the advanced level. So those were the advantageous things uh, that I have learned in my PhD. Then what happens? I was doing well, I was progressing. Then what suddenly happened that made me decide to quit my PhD program? So it was because due to the fear that I will not finish my PhD within the five year tenure, then my fellowship will be over. Then how can I sustain myself financially? Though there were some project funding uh, in the hope of my mind that maybe the tenure will be over, there will be some financial support. But uh, I was not relying on that. I was to, I was really hoping that at least be, uh, before 
four or five years we'll have a good result and I can uh, publish paper, I, I can get out with my GDP. Those are the things, but uh, the things came into my mind, though even if I, if I will get a PhD degree, then what is the use of that? Because if you don't have 60% of your preceding degree, you are not eligible for assistant professor or scientific officer in most of the research institutions, whether it is IIT, it is NIT or some renowned research institution. Even you are not eligible for uh, SRM or VIT like uh, top level uh, private uh, universities as well. So 90% uh, the road was closed for me. So what should I do? So my only option was, as I am in the PhD program, somehow I will uh, finish the degree. But at the same time, I'll prepare for job. So the, I started for preparing scientific assistant and technical assistant, all these kind of jobs. So I think I gave exam in Niger, I gave exam in Aratkat, I gave exam for ISRO URSC at Bangalore and uh, at NIT Padna, that my current location as well. So many of the many failed attempt was there, but finally I have got myself into some position. Some other day I discuss with you my all those experiences as preparation during the course of technical assistant exam. Uh, now the thing is, I used to study for my BSc syllabus from our ten to I think before the lunch hour. But after the lunch hour, I started preparation for my uh, research work. So this way life was going on. But in between, my father's and mother's health was not well. My mother was a psychiatric patient over 10 to 15 years. But in my PhD tenure, my father also got a brain stroke and he, he was completely paralyzed. It took some time to recover. There were my family members, they were looking after him. But still, there was urgent need every time I used to got phone calls from my home. And they used to say, Come back that your mother and father is not well. So that time I felt that if I finish my PhD, if I go for a postdoc in abroad, then there will be no one to look after my parents. And also, if I don't get myself uh, into a good uh, government job, then how I can sustain my family if I don't have my own financial uh, independence. And in between, there are also marriage pressure because I was in a relationship. Though. So there is a constant pressure. Though my Though my uh, wife, oh, he's really motivating. He motivated me that you finish your PhD. I'll be there for you. He also was ready to support me financially that uh, if there is no funding, then I can support you financially. But somewhere in my mind, I used to have so many thoughts. And so many thoughts due to this marriage pressure and financial independence, I used to have panic at us day by day. I still remember, I, I think I spent uh, more than 10 days in Institute Hospital and time to time. Because every evening, I used to have panic attacks. I was uh, spending alone in the hostel room because I was afraid to go to the lab. Because if I see lots of work is there, a lot of pressure is there, then the panic attack will be increased. So I used to you know, sweat a lot. I used to vomit. I mean, 10 to 11 times this vomiting happened, I think, two to three days. And I also having a vertigo or vomiting sensation all over that day. And this used to attack me at the evening only. So this was the type of panic attack I had. And I, it, I took time, I think one and a half month for me because I came back home, I take some rest. Then uh, things were getting normal and get back into the campus. But after three and a half years, I was really much pressurized that I now I have to have a job because my funding are getting over. And there is one year left, I don't have much progress in my PhD. That was pretty much, pretty much clear that I cannot finish with the five year tenure. I mean, it is quite normal that you will finish PhD six and six and a half years, but I was, I don't have that kind of perseverance because I really lose that patience. Also in my lab atmosphere, there are some miscommunication with my supervisor and me as well, and some of my fellow mates as well. And especially I was afraid to, I mean, spoke up uh, to my supervisor, this, all these things I was going to, I have never discussed with him. Maybe I will, but at that time I might have got some help but uh, I don't have the courage to face him so because of that silently I have decided that as soon as I get some job I will just leave the PhD program I mean it was hard it was really hard I still remember the last day I mean full of tears I left the campus and I have taken my final decision the answer was painful but yet clear that it was time to let go the hardest the choice, hardest I, choice have I have known was to walk away, but not alone. 
I carried my soul, I carried my peace, the bravest goodbye brought my release. N not a failure, not a lie, just the bravest goodbye. Left my crown on the other side, one last step, one final sigh, under that endless open sky. It's time to say goodbye.